In this lesson, we're working further with our special angles, the cast rule, and solving our trig equations. So our goal today is that we want to use the cast rule and special angles to solve a variety of problems involving trig equations. So our first example here is asking us to use our knowledge of special triangles to solve for angle theta if the angle, angle theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. Include a diagram in our solution. All right, so if I look at this first example, the sine of our angle theta is equal to 1 over 2. Now, just remember, sine is really opposite over hypotenuse. And the reason I'm identifying that is because perhaps this is a special triangle ratio here. The other thing I'm noticing is that sine is positive, so I know that my theta could be in quadrant 1, or it could be, or and it could be, in quadrant 2. So there's two options for my actual value for my angle. Now I'm going to sketch what the opposite and hypotenuse might look like um, in terms of an angle in standard position. The opposite side is equivalent to the y-coordinate and our hypotenuse is just our terminal arm for our angle in standard position. So if I draw that in, my hypotenuse has to be twice as long as my opposite. Let me judge where that's going to go. Let's try something like that. Okay, so I've got my angle here in standard position. That's where my theta might be or would be. So let me draw theta in there. Um, this is a 90 degree angle. This side would be opposite and this one's hypotenuse. Now that reminds me of the ratio 1 to square root 3. That would make the x value um, or side length ratio be in the ratio of root 3. I know then that my theta matches up with a 30 degree angle in a 30 60 degree triangle. So theta could equal 30 degrees. But I also know that sine is positive in the second quadrant. So that means I could draw the triangle this way with, again, my x being the root 3, my y being the 1, and my hypotenuse being the 2. The only difference is that x actually is a negative square root 3. My related acute angle is the 30 degrees, and therefore my theta angle in standard position would be 180 degrees. My second possibility for theta, theta 2, could be 180 degrees minus that 30 degrees, which leaves us with 50 degrees there. 150 degrees. I said 50, I meant 150 degrees. So that's my theta 2. So theta 1 would be 30 degrees, that's the answer in the first quadrant. Theta 2, the second possibility is that it's in the second quadrant and it's 150 degrees. So two answers there. All right, second option here, tan of theta is equal to negative 1. Now, negative 1 really could be written as negative 1 over 1. And we know tan is u for opposite. Ah, look at the tan. This is adjacent, which we don't say that as much anymore because we know the, how damaging the sun is to our skin and the likelihood of skin cancer. So now we have tan being a negative value, and according to cast, tan is negative in the second quadrant, and it's negative in the fourth quadrant. Now, I also know my opposite is a 1, and my adjacent is a 1, so if I build my triangles off of those terminal arms, I really have my 1, so in the fourth quadrant, my opposite is the negative, and my adjacent is my positive value. And then that makes that a 45, 45, 90. So this is 45 degrees in here. My principal angle then would be 360 minus 45. So that's one option. You can call this theta 1 or it could be theta 2. It doesn't matter which order we do that. We state them in. So 360 minus the 45 degrees. That's going to take us to 315 degrees. The other option is we have our other triangle coming this way. The adjacent is the negative one, the opposite is positive one. Again, related acute angle is 45 degrees. We also have 180 degrees, subtract 45 degrees being a possibility, which is 135 degrees. So those are our two options for our thetas if we're solving in the domain of 0 to 360. All right, cosine of theta is equal to a negative uh, negative 1 over root 2. 1, 1, root 2, I think, is our options here. And we know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And we know that the cosine is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So I know q2, q3 is where our theta could possibly be here. 
So I'm going to do a little sketch. I'm going to be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Um, it's the 1, 1 square root 2. So my adjacent side is my negative 1, and my hypotenuse is the root 2. My opposite would be positive 1. Similarly, down here, we've got negative 1 as our adjacent. Opposite is negative 1. Hypotenuse is root 2. Okay, But uh, these would then give us the um, same angle I had for the previous one for theta 2. So in the second quadrant, my angle could be 135 degrees. It'll be the 180 minus this related acute angle of 45 degrees. Or my second option for theta would be 180 plus 45 degrees, which would be 225 degrees. So those are my two angles for that particular one. All right, so the next ones, we have a little bit more work to do because it's not as simple as we already have the cos or the sine or the tan by itself. Uh, when we look at these examples, I have 2 times the sine of theta equals the square root of 3. Well, if we had just 2x equals 5, I would divide both sides by 2. In this case, it's just that I don't have an x, I have a sine theta instead, but I'm going to still divide both sides by 2. That will leave me with the sine of theta being equal to root 3 over 2 root 3, we a uh, little trouble here, bear with me, that should be root 3 over 2. So my opposite has to be the root 3, the angle across from the side that's a root 3 would be the 60 degree angle. This one happens to also be a special angle case, so I'll just draw this in here. So sine is a positive ratio, so I didn't need to have this there we go. Um, so it's going to be in the second quadrant or the first quadrant. And we're going to have the root 3 opposite over hypotenuse. That makes this 60 degrees in here as a special triangle. This would be my 1. Or on this side, again, we would have root 3 as our opposite. Hypotenuse is my 2. And my short side would be that negative 1. So my theta. If it's in the first quadrant, it's going to be 60 degrees. One option for theta, theta subscript 1 is 60. Or a second option, theta 2, uh, could be 180 degrees minus that acute angle of 60 degrees, which takes us to 120 degrees. So our second option for theta to be in the second quadrant would be 120 degrees. All right, continuing on. Again, this is just like having a, a linear equation. If I had 4x minus 1 equals 0, I know I would add 1 to both sides and then divide both sides by 4. It's the same process with this. I'm going to uh, add 1 to both sides. I'm going to get positive 1. So I'm really adding 1 here and adding 1 on this side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I get cos theta equals 1 quarter. Now this one, I don't have any special triangles with a 4 in it, other than my like Pythagorean triple, but that's not a special angle that we're talking about. So I'm going to use my calculator here and do second function cos on the 1 divided by 4, and I get, to the nearest degree, I get about 76 degrees. It's 75.52, uh, which rounds up to 76 degrees. So theta is approximately equal to 76 degrees. Now that's in the first quadrant. I'm looking for where cos is positive. We know cos is positive in the first quadrant. It's also positive in the fourth quadrant. So if I sketch that out, a little diagram here, I've got the one answer of 76 degrees in the first quadrant. So this adjacent is my one, my hypotenuse is the four. The other option is I'm here, adjacent is the one, hypotenuse is the four. So my other theta then would be 360 degrees backed off by 76 degrees, or take away the 76 degrees. That represents the related acute angle. So 360 take away 76 results in 284 degrees. So that's our second option for theta, which lies in the fourth quadrant. Okay, the second last one here. Again, I want to get theta by itself, so I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. We're going to get 5 tan theta equaling negative 8. And then I'm going to divide both sides. That's an 8. Divide both sides by 5. And we get tan theta equaling 8, negative 8 fifths. So tan ratio is a negative. 
tan is positive in the first and the third quadrants, so that means my answer should be in the second and the fourth quadrants. So tan is opposite over adjacent, so my opposite is 8, my adjacent is 5. So I'm trying to draw something that looks like the opposite is going to be a bit bigger than my adjacent. So if I drop my perpendicular with the x-axis here, that makes this uh, adjacent being 5, opposite being 8. That would be my negative there. Drop my perpendicular here. My opposite is 8, my adjacent is 5. It's the opposite that's negative in this quadrant. If I put that in my calculator to solve for a theta, 8 divided by 5, um, whoops, 8 divided by 5, get that answer, and then shift tan or second function tan. That gives me about 58 degrees. 58 degrees is my related acute angle, so that actually doesn't fit. Um, I think if you put the negative in there, you're going to get negative 58. That doesn't fit my domain, though. I'm just going to erase my... I put theta 1 on that, but I'm going to erase the little 1. That's what theta is, but my actual answers to fit the domain would be that theta is going to be 360, 360 degrees, minus the 58 degrees, which gives us 302 degrees. So that's one option for theta. Our other option is we're doing 180 minus the 58 degrees to back it off and put it in the second quadrant there. Okay, so 180 minus 58 gives us 128 degrees. That does not sound right. 180 minus 58 is 122 degrees. So that's my second option for theta, so theta 2. All right. And I'm just going to pop up an answer for the last one, whoops, for the last one in a moment here, um, just because my time's running out here. But again, treat this like you would a linear equation where you're getting the sine theta by itself and then you inverse function. Okay, for question D, you should have gotten two answers uh, for our sine ratio. It ends up being in the first and second quadrant, 19 degrees and 161 degrees are our possible values for our theta.